Hello everyone, welcome to Random Matrix Theory. So, in the first lecture, we, we will review some prerequisites of the course. So, let's start with chapter 0, which is prerequisites. Okay, so first we'll review, in the first part, we'll review some linear algebra. So linear, so let's write it like this, basic linear algebra. Okay, so let's start with matrices. So what are matrices? Matrices, so a matrix is usually defined as a rectangular array of numbers. Almost all of you, I'm guessing, have used the idea of matrices in some, one way or the other. So in this, in this section, we'll review some basic ideas about matrices. So what are those? So a matrix of size, let's say, n cross n, which is row, number of rows, times number of columns, which is this, looks something like this. So let's say it's a matrix M. These are the entries of the matrix. And, and so it's a, let's give it a small subscript. So it's N cross N matrix. So we can write the elements like this, for example, AIJ, where I corresponds to the ith row and J corresponds to the jth column. So A11 is the first element of the matrix. Sorry, the first, the element corresponding to the first row and the first column, which is this. Okay, so let's study some basic matrix operations. So what are those? Let's start with, let's say, transpose. So what is transpose? Transpose is basically interchange, interchanging a matrices, a matrixes, row and column. It's basic. It's basically so. If you have a matrix M, we denote its transpose by M T, and Let's say you have the elements like this, M. So M transpose would be something like this. I interchanged the rows and the columns. It's just taking this, taking this row and putting it in the column. So the second is determinant and again it's basically defined in let's say we have a matrix M A B C D so the determinant would look like something like this so almost all of you have dealt with determinant before so I won't I won't waste much time in this. So, and there's complex conjugate or so we can have, so let's say we have a matrix M, we can have complex entries here, right? Say for example, we can have something like this or something like this. We can have some complex entries here. 
So the complex conjugate is basically complex conjugating every element of the matrix. Let's say we have something like this. So the complex conjugate would look something like this. Okay, this is the complex conjugate and there's something called the Hermitian conjugate, which we denote Hermitian conjugate, which we'll often use in this course, which is basically denoted by something like this. This is actually the uh, complex conjugating matrix and transposing it. Or you can do the other way around. This is the Hermitian conjugate is equal to transpose of a matrix plus complex conjugate. So you find you do the complex conjugate of every matrix and transpose it. Then you have the Hermitian conjugate. And let's see what we ha what else do we have? We have the inverse, which is basically a inverse, or since we're doing it m m inverse, you can f you can find it in various ways. And uh, and a matrix is remember that matrix is invertible if the determinant is non-zero. Otherwise, the matrix the, ma the matrix isn't invertible. So remember that another thing is diagonalization. This is very important for our course. So we, I'll, I'll brief it now, but we'll come back again in, in the next lecture. So diagonalization is basically making a matrix diagonal. So what does that mean? It means you only have diagonal entries. And all of them, others are 0, 0, 0. So this is matrix diagonalization. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, we have those simple things such as addition, multiplication, and so on. And so on. Okay, so we have covered most of the basic matrix operations. Let's now see another thing, uh, some relevant, which is relevant to our course, rele so, event matrix types. First is the zero matrix, which is basically correspondence corresponds to a i j equal to zero which means every element co corresponding to every column and ev every row it's zero so for example we can say m two cross two a zero matrix two cross two zero matrix is something like this a i j is zero for all i and j So again, remember we'll often use this standard symbol to note to denote uh, the zero matrix n cross n to denote its size and so on. Another matrix is the identity matrix, which is uh, a with this correspondence to corresponds to say you have a i j equal to one when i equals j that is the diagonal elements and another condition a i j equal to zero if i not equal to j so which means you only have the diagonal entries that is right and you can write it like this as well where delta means chronic you can write this equal to the chronicle delta which means i equal to j then 1 
i not equal to j then zero so this is the identity matrix and third we have the column matrix aka vectors so which are basically columns you can have row matrices as well let's say v1 so and so on these are column matrices or vectors for example unit vectors in three dimensions you know you we can write it like this let's say unit vectors corresponding to ex ey in cartesian coordinates of course so okay then we have another kind of matrix called triangular matrix So triangular matrix, there's two types of triangular matrices. So as the name suggests, it forms a triangle. That's why we call it a triangular matrix. Let's see an example of triangular matrix. We have two kinds of triangular matrix. One of them is upper triangular matrix. The other, the lower triangular matrix. Let's see an example. So 10, 17. This is an upper triangular matrix and lower would be something let's put it okay so you see they have formed a triangle here triangle here entries have formed a triangle here so yeah this is the triangular matrix another important type of matrix that will be very relevant to our discussion is the symmetric matrix the symmetric matrix it says a or let's let's denote by m since we are de dealing with denoting by m always so m equals m transpose that is the transpose of a matrix m is the same as the matrix itself so what could be an example let's see an example example so if you try transposing it you get the same thing so m transpose equals m another type of matrix we have in if which is very similar to the symmetric matrix just a negative of it which is this q symmetric matrix or anti-symmetric sometimes called skew symmetric matrix which is m transpose equal to minus m if you transpose it you get the negative of your original matrix okay so what else so there is the hermitian matrix hermitian matrix so you might already know what this is going to be which is m equals m dagger where dagger denotes the hermitian conjugate so if you're doing if you're doing if, if you have a complex matrix if you hermitian conjugate it you get the same thing back for example you can have a look at this By Hermitian conjugating it, you get the same thing. So, and very similar is the anti Hermitian, which is basically the negative of it, m equals minus m. So, there you go. And next, we have the unitary matrix. which is let's say u dagger u or let's denote it let's denote by m m dagger m is the identity if you if you take the hermitian conjugate of a matrix and multiply by m 
you get identity this is very important for discussion also note that for in this case right so it's an important thing about that and also uh, there is another kind of unitary matrix this is subset of unitary matrices which are special unitary matrices if you have done a bit of group theory you know that all these form a group and special unitary group is a subgroup of the unitary group but you don't need to know group theory for this you just need to understand what's going on so among it's a subset of the unitary matrix well, let's try it out subset of unitary matrix set So, yeah. Mm, okay. So, what is the char characteristic of this? So, in here, in addition to following this constraint, which is M dagger M equals identity, it follows another constraint, which is the determinant must be one. It's it's this the condition which makes it special unitary. All of these forms form a group. So if you've done group theory, you're very comfortable with these things. Okay. So, and last, probably, is the orthogonal matrix. So orthogonal is the same. It's just dealing with real, real entries and transposing it. So if you transpose a matrix, multiply by itself. Let's denote by M. Okay, M transpose M equals identity. So there we go. And it's the orthogonal matrix condition. And also the special case would be special orthogonal would be determinant of M equals one. So there we go. We have identified all the types of matrices we will be dealing with in this course. Also, we learned some basic matrix operations. And yeah, we are ready for, to move on to the next section where we'll learn about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And also, most importantly, the diagonalization of a matrix, which will prove very fruitful in our discussion. Thank you.